So we have a problem regarding prime numbers, a question or an issue. By the way, a prime number is a number that has exactly two positive divisors. So 2 is a prime, 3 is a prime, 5 is a prime, 1 is not a prime, 4 is not a prime. So having said that, here is our main problem. To decide if 191 is a prime, we need to check all of the positive integers greater than 1 but less than square root of 191 to see if they divide 191. Note the square root of 191 is 13.82027, so we need to test the members from the following set only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's all. 191 is a large number. We just need to test if the following numbers divide 191. If they don't, 191 is a prime. Why don't we have to check numbers like 110 or 95? So that's our question. Why do we just test these handful of numbers and if they don't divide 191, we claim that 191 is a prime. Why? By the way, this 13 is the square is less than or equal to the square root of this number. So if the square root of this number would have been a whole number, I would have included it, but it's not, so it's 13. So let's see if we can conceptually understand why this rule works. Why is this rule meaningful? What's, what's the reasoning or how do we justify this? Why do we do it? Why is it okay to do? So let's see if we can find out all the factors of 64. Um, square root of 64 is 8. Let's circle that. Now, 1 divides 64, we're going to list 1 times 64 is equal to 64. Note, both 1 and 64 are factors of 64. 2 divides 64, so we're going to write 2 times 32 is equal to 64. Note, 2 and 32 are factors of 64. 3 doesn't divide 64, 4 does, so we're going to write 4 times 16 is equal to 64. 5 doesn't, 6 doesn't, 7 doesn't, 8 does, and we're going to write 8, and when 8 does divide 64, that quotient is 8, that's where the other 8 is coming from, 64. So take a look at this very carefully. These factors are less than 8 and these factors are greater than 8. It's a balancing act. If 8 times 8 is 64, if you want to divide 64 by a number smaller than 8, the quotient will be larger than 8. Otherwise the balancing won't work. So for instance, if 8 times 8 is 64 but you're trying to divide 64 by 2, the quotient has to be larger than 8. So for every divisor of 8 or a factor of 8, uh, 64, let's, let's repeat that once again. For every factor of 64 that's smaller than 8, there will be a factor of 64 that's greater than 8. So if you can test all the numbers here, all the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, by testing all these 8 numbers, and the first one is obvious, 1 times 64 is 64. If you really test all these numbers, you will catch all the factors of 64. And by analyzing this, we can kind of tell that if 64 has three factors smaller than 8, it will have three factors larger than 8. And if it is a, 8 is a factor, so by testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you're going to catch all the factors. So that's the argument behind the theorem that was in our original question. We don't even need a hundredths chart anymore. Let's say the square root of 100 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. And I need to test numbers 1 through 10 to find all the factors of 100. 1 divides 100. 1 times 100 is 100. 2 divides 100. 2 times 50 is 100. 4 divides 100. 4 times 25 is 100. 3 dozen, by the way. 5 does, 5 times 20 is 100, 6 doesn't, 7 doesn't, 8 doesn't, 9 doesn't, 10 doesn't. Now, all these 
numbers that are smaller than 10 and divide 100 will catch the other larger than 10 factors. So I don't have to check if 25 divides 100, it's already here. I just need to check for the numbers that are smaller than or equal to 10 to, to see if they divide 100 or not. So that's the argument. We're going to give you a general explanation on the next slide. So the argument goes as follows. If s times s is 191, s is the square root of 191, in other words you're finding out what number times itself is 191, the answer is about 13.89. Now, from our basic understanding of division, I can argue that if I choose a number 11, if I want to divide 11, I'm going to put a box here, Now, I know that what I have here will be larger than 13. If this number 11 is smaller than 13, this number here will be larger than 13, actually 13.89. So that argument, if I want to divide 191 by 10, I know this number here will be larger than 13.89 because 10 is smaller than 13.89. So the argument is as follows. So, if s times s is 191, and if you can find another pair, a times z is 191, and if a is smaller than s, z must be larger than s. I only need to test numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. Of course, the first one, 1 is very obvious, 1 times 191, and I don't have to test it to decide if 191 is a prime. I need to test these numbers to decide if 191 is a prime. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And why? Because if they divide the other divisors or factors of 191 would be larger than 13. And if there were any pair larger than 13 that would divide 191, that would have already been caught by these. So that's the informal justification. I hope that helps.